Good morning, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny from the Hermit Hut. I thought about uh, changing my title of my YouTube channel. I, it's like Johnny Keen. My username is Saint on Fire Seven Seven. And uh, but I don't know how I got into saying <laughs> this is Johnny Keen from the Hermit Hut, but I kind of do look at myself kind of like a hermit. I mentioned. Uh, this week I had an appointment with my psychologist and I see him every four weeks and and he is a professing Christian and so and it's only every four weeks and uh, but he always says that he sees me as a Calvinistic monk <laughs> and uh, it's like I, I, I tell my wife uh, Carol, well, first of all, I should tell you, it is February the 24th, 2024. It is 8.08 08 in the morning. It's a Saturday morning. The sun is shining. My wife said, Carol said before she left, my wife left to have breakfast with her one of her childhood friends. And then she's going to go do an interview. My wife's been doing interviewing people in her church about their lives and then she writes them up and they they're published in the her church's monthly newsletter and there's this woman in her church who does who recycles to raise money for different ministries in her church uh, missions and things so she was going to do that after she has breakfast with her childhood friend so I'm here by myself, so I said I can talk to my friends in, uh, out there on YouTube, in BookTube. So yeah, it's a Saturday morning. It's sunny out, cold, 17 degrees, my wife said. Got cold during the night, but um, we might get some snow flurries this week, but nothing really major. We're supposed to get some rain, which we need. We, uh, we where we live is a farming community. There's farms all around where we live here in southwest Michigan. Uh, corn and soybeans. And because, as I said to you, I, um, I worked for 15 years in the egg processing plant, which is south of us. There is huge... Uh, chicken coops, you know, probably over, I don't know, it's, I don't know how many chickens, but it's over the hundreds of thousands. There's at least three major chicken farms south of us that produce eggs. But here I'm rambling. I just, I'm here to talk about books, what I've been reading. I didn't know Friday reads. This is Saturday. I didn't do a Friday Reads because I really haven't really been reading that different from what I've shown in my last couple of videos. I'm kind of, I'm, a, I'd, I'm not one of these people, well I've read four or five week, books a month. I'm a slow reader uh, because um, I read a lot of books at one time and I'm a mood reader and I when I'm reading, I'm always writing in my paper diary. I'm on page, oh, got blurry. I'm on page 169 for the year 2024. So I'm always writing in my paper diary throughout the day. I have online diaries. As I mentioned, I, I mainly write in live journal, crooked fingers. Then I paste that in three other online diaries. And the only one that, the other diaries you have to pay if you want to have, be on a search engine. But LiveJournal, I've been in since March of 2001. And if you put my name, Crooked Fingers, in one, one thing, you know, I'm all over the internet. But I never did that. The reason why I got into writing in live journals is because 
I was always reading online diaries before I started my own. And so I thought it'd be kind of neat just to, because I like to write. I'm a writer, so I like to write. So I thought, hey, you know, Live Journal makes it easy to start an online diary. So I started doing it, and I do it every single day. And I write in diary land. I have a WordPress, and someplace else I write. I just paste in there what I write in Live Journal. But in Live Journal, I can paste in photos. Like yesterday, I took a long walk at a local park called Van Ralty Farm County Park. And every time I go for a walk, as you all know, I'm into photography. I like to take pictures of nature and birds and my day-to-day -day reality. And I paste those in my live journal. And I paste these videos, my YouTube videos. I, as I said, that my, my YouTube channel is part of my diary, uh, a visual or a, a visual aspect of my diary because uh, that's what I do. Uh, my wife always has, she hasn't said it in a long time, but she always thought it was kind of weird that I'm, I'm a very quiet, introverted person, and yet I'm always putting myself out into the world, in booktube, YouTube, uh, online diary. Uh, I have a Flickr account that people watch, see my video, uh, my photographs, and uh, but uh, I suppose be, a human being, <laughs> we're social animals. We uh, we live. Now I I'm kind of like a, like I said a hermit type, but I'm not antisocial. I'm not. I'm friendly. You know, I love people. I want to be a blessing. I want to be helpful. I want to be kind, I want to encourage people, but it's a hard world. You know, we need, like it says in the Bible, we're to love our neighbor as ourselves. So, and because, it, you know, it's a, it's a hard life. No matter what, where you're at in life, rich or poor, middle class, whatever, you know, life is hard and we need to get along one another. We need to get beside one another and to uh, and to uh, seek to be you know a neighbor seek to be a friend <laughs> reach out to the stranger so anyway what I'm trying to say is that uh, I started my YouTube channel to share about Christian books and I've always been a bookworm. I've always loved books since I, you know, now I've, now I've said it over the years. I don't use the word love lightly, but I do love books. There are very, are very rare. There are very few things in this world that I love. I love my wife. I love my children. I love their spouses. I love my grandchildren. I love. Uh, I love birds, I love nature, I love God, I love God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit, I love the elect angels, I love the community of the saints, I love people in general. Now, I'm not saying that there are not people out there that maybe if I really got to know them, I wouldn't dislike them, but because they're made in the image of God, we are to, to love them. I mean, look at God himself. God shows his goodness to the evil and to the good. He shows his mercy to the good and to the bad. Uh, talk about the four seasons. God gives the rain and the sunshine to the good and to the bad. Like, it's like it says in the Bible, like they're in the Gospel of Matthew, that in the church you have the wheat and you have the tares, and they're together. We don't know who are truly God's elect. And so everyone in church, we, in grace, well, I don't know in grace, but in, we don't judge unless they show otherwise that they're one of God's elect. 
But anyway, going back to books, I started my YouTube channel. I was thinking about this this morning because I was watching someone last night who was showing that they really like big books. Well, I like big books. But in, they went through different big books like War and Peace and other big books. But they showed the Bible and they said this, their Bible is a big book because it's a, well, my Bible has 1,073 pages. And they thought, well, I'm not here to talk about the Bible or to give sermons. Well, I'm not here either. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, well, I show the Bible and I talk about Christianity and I talk about my faith, but I'm not here to preach. I'm not here to sermonize. I'm just here to, like I said, to show my love for my neighbor. And also, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I mean, isn't that what the Apostle Paul says? It's a very famous verse that you hear in when you're in churches and among people who are sharing their faith. It says, uh, So I can find, I haven't even looked at it in a while. I'm just waking up here. <laughs> I'm still waking up. It says, he says, oh, I can find it. All of a sudden my mind went blank. But he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So, yeah, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Uh, So, it's a, the point is, yeah, it's the power of God unto salvation. So, as I said, if you love your neighbor and you know that life is hard and that life is a struggle and that we are in a very dark times in world history, where do we go? <laughs> well, we go to God who is gracious, merciful, and loving. And he has the power to give us the strength to persevere in these dark times. And so, that's why I, I share my faith is because, you know, not only because I love the Lord Jesus Christ, but because I love my neighbor. I'm not here to preach, I'm not here to sermonize, I'm not here to, you know, jam Christianity down your throat. I'm just here to be real. I mean, that's what I'm real. I mean, some people, uh, for many years I watched a YouTube channel of a woman who was an anarchist. She was a leftist, communist, anarchist from Portland, Oregon. I really enjoyed watching her videos. I've watched people who were into uh, paganism, witchcraft, uh, they were into uh, Eastern religions, yoga, yo uh, being yoga. I've watched people who are into uh, Buddhism and Hinduism, people who are into uh, just, you know, radical laps lifestyles. Uh, everybody has a world and life view. Everybody has a personal philosophy. Everybody has... Uh, a perspective of how they see the world and how they interpret the world and, and how they talk about their reality. They're married. I mean, if you're married, you have, or you have a partner, or you're from a different country. I mean, yesterday I got a comment from a guy from Australia. I got a guy named Alan from Kent, and his wife's his wife made the comment and she said, say hi to Alan from Kent. I think Kent's in England. So I said, hi Alan, uh, thank you for watching. But I'm not, I'm not here to preach. I'm not here to evangelize. I'm here to be uh, what I am. And as a Christian, as I've said, we are out of love, we share our faith. Not, not to be uh, you know, prideful or th th we do it out of love. So, 
But as far as books, what I've been reading this morning is I to, I've been going through these period and reprints, and the one I'm on this morning is a discourse concerning conscience, a hell, a heaven or hell upon the earth by Nathaniel Vincent. This is the one I'm reading this morning. And I also been reading through that Looking Into Jesus by Isaac Ambrose. I also been reading uh, in the mornings that my wife and I are going through the Gospel of Luke. We're going through the reading through the New Testament. We read through, uh, we were reading Calvin's Institutes, but I told you we got, kind of got bogged down. And then we were reading a book through the Advent season. Now we're reading a devotional book going through Lent. But we're trying to go through the Gospel of Luke, and then we'll go to the Gospel of John. We're going through the New Testament. And then probably after we read the New Testament, we might just start from the book of Genesis. But one night, also in the mornings, I try to break up reading the Puritans, and I've um, been reading New Testament Theology by Eckhart J. Schoenfeld. I've really enjoyed this. I've read... Five, almost 600 pages of this and I highly recommend it. I have in my main study over there down the hallway I have other I have a whole shelf of New Testament theology, Old Testament theology, biblical theology. For example I have this theology of the New Testament, a canonical and synthetic approach by Frank Hellman. I keep these books in my study because they're reference books is when you're going to the New Testament. I also have New Testament Theology, Magnifying God in Christ by Thomas R. Schneider, who I highly recommend also. Teaches at the Southern Baptist Seminary. Then I have this. I'm just showing you a sample of what's in my main study. A New Testament Historical and Theological Introduction by Dan, D Donald A. Hagner. Hagner. So yeah, I'm always reading New Testament theology, Old Testament theology, Biblical theology. And uh, I really like reading, New I really enjoyed reading this one. I think of all the ones I have in my study right now, I would highly recommend this one. Uh, it's not hard to read. Don't. Like uh, people read the Bible and they don't read, <laughs> they read the Bible and they don't have any historical or theological background when they're reading it. And, and they give you their opinions of what they feel, what they think. Well, to me, I find it a blessing that I can pick a book up like this from a man who studied. I mean, he, he teaches at, uh, he's a Mary French Rockefeller Distinguished Professor of New Testament at Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary. I have his other books. He wrote a two-volume work on early Christian missions. He wrote a book, uh, The Trial and Crucifixion of Jesus. He wrote a book, uh, Jesus in Jerusalem. He, he's a, a world-renowned scholar on the New Testament. I'd rather read, I'd rather read him, and he, as far as I've read, he believes the Bible to be the Word of God. He believes in the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He, he professes to be a Christian who really believes in the Bible being the Word of God. So I'd rather read him and then listen to somebody who says, well, you know, I'm an atheist. You know, I basically hate God, but I'm going to read through the Gospels and tell you what it says and what, what it teaches. So how can, how can an atheist, a God-hater, who read through the Bible and tell you what he thinks and feels. Who, who would you rather trust to tell you what the Bible really teaches and what the Gospel teaches? And what I'd rather trust him than some atheist. Somebody who believes, well, a human being is just on the same, same level as a dog. A, a dog and me we're on the same level. There is no difference. Man is just an animal. He, he evolved out of slime. 
And uh, there is no God, there is no purpose to the creation of man. There is no, uh, there is no personal God who has come to this world, incarnated the Son of God, who came to this world to die for sinners. Ah, that's all just myth. That's a bunch of, you know, no. I, like I said, to me personally, I became a Christian because I came to see that the Bible gave me truth, something solid to believe in, something to, to a system of truth, you know, a body of ethics, a way to understand, interpret the world. As far as what I've been reading, basically the, since I, these last videos, I've been reading The Remembered Part by Ryan Rico Friesen. I've really gotten into this and I've been rereading parts of it. As I told you, this is a, this is a, a three-part novel. This is The rem Remembered Part and then the, that's number three. Number one is The Inventive the Invented Part by Ray Rico Frizen. And then the second one, The Dream Part by Ray Rico Frizen. So I start rereading last night, I start reading the last section of the second one because I was reading it, uh, an article about these three volumes and uh, I wanted to refresh my memory because the last part of the remembered of the dream part is an introduction to the remembered part. <laughs> so yeah, so get this straight. It's a three volume. You have the invented part, which I read. And then you have, secondly, the dream part. And then you have the remembered part. So I've been really just reading this kind of non-stop. I have it last couple of days. So, except in the mornings, as I said, in the mornings, I read my Puritan reprints, I read New Testament theology, been reading uh, Henry Bullinger's The Decades, and reading Look, Looking Unto Jesus by Isaac Ambrose, and then when I get into the noon time, about noon, I have lunch, and I'm always writing in my diary as I'm reading throughout the day. And then I've been reading primarily this. I haven't been reading any kind of nonfiction in the last couple of days. In the mornings, my wife and I, when we have devotions, like I said, we read through the Gospel of Mark, no, the Gospel of Luke, and we read the Valley of Vision, a collection of Puritan prayers and devotions. At night, my wife and I, we read another devotional book at night before we go to bed, and then we have a time of prayer. As far, I did get a, a CD in the mail. I'll mention this as I'm closing. I got the new Granddaddy. Uh, this is Blue Wave. Granddaddy is like an indie kind of rock, kind of mellow. <coughs> this, the, the lead singer in Blue Wave, Granddaddy, is Jason Light, Lighted. This is his earlier albums. I, well, I have, this is his solo album. They put out, Granddaddy put out like, this is another Jason Light solo album, Yours Truly, The Commuter. But then Granddaddy put out Someday. Then they put out, Granddaddy put out Under the Western Freeway. Granddaddy, the software slumped. And then they put out Just Like the Family Cat, I think it says, Granddaddy. Complete Dunes, Granddaddy. And then they put out Granddaddy excerpts from the diary of Todd Zella. So yeah, I've been in, I'm into music, so I got the new Blue Wave Granddaddy got yesterday in the mail. Yeah, I still listen to music even though my hearing is going. I have tinnitus in my left ear. I hear constant buzzing and noise, but I still like music. 
So I thought I'd make a video. Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for your comments. Do pray you have a good reading weekend. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you for the comments. Thank you, Alan, out there. His wife said to say hi to Alan out there in Kent, England, I think it is. So hi, Alan. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all. Like I said, I really am here just to be, I want to be a blessing. I want to be an encouragement. I want to say that you're not alone, that, uh, that God is love. And he showed that love by dying for sinners on the cross. And that he not only died, but he rose again. He ascended and he reigns over the heavens and the earth. And that we can come to him at his throne of grace in a time of need. Uh, because after we repent of our sins and we forsake them and we commit our lives, the Lord, to Jesus Christ to be our prophet, priest, and king, we can come to him in our time of need. And he is compassionate and merciful and loving. And he will, by his Holy Spirit, give us the power and the strength to go through our trials, through our depressions, through our insecurities, through our when we see our life seems to be falling apart. He is there. He really does care. That's one thing I, that I've been impressed with over the years, that God truly wants us to know Him. That's why He sent His Son, to reconcile sinners to Himself, to forgive us, that we can have forgiveness of sins, that we can be cleansed by the washing of the Holy Spirit, and that we can come into His presence and have fellowship and communion with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And that we can have hope that after this life there is an eternal weight of glory for all those who put their faith and love and seek to be holy as God is holy. But see, now I'm, you know, I'm not preaching to you. I'm just, this is my reality. This is how I understand living in this fallen world. And uh, so everybody, so that's just where I'm at. And I make it known in my YouTube that I am a Christian diarist and bookworm. But I'm here to be your friend. I'm here to be, uh, to say, you know, Jesus Christ is there and ready. He says, come to me all who are weary, heaven and laden, and I shall give you rest. Rest in God. Well, anyway, I'm rambling. I'm not here to preach. I'm just here to say, hope you're all doing well. This is Saturday. This is a Saturday read. This is what I've been reading, listening to the new granddaddy, reading Remembered Part, reading through the Gospel of Luke, reading Puritan Spirituality, 17th century English Puritan Spirituality, and just seeking to live a godly hermit life and to love my neighbor and to glorify God. Until next time, bye.